Hello everybody, I'm going to show you what I've done to this Dayton Audio SPA 500. They're still claiming 500 watts. SPA 500 subwoofer plate amps. And I got this about three weeks ago. I have done the other video show you what I've done to it to eliminate the DC offset, the louds, pops and pump, uh, thumps. But there are other reasonable corner rounded um, items that in, the, in this plate amp that I would like to address so it can be well let's say there's a lots of room for improvement but I don't blame them to doing what they do they have done a pretty good job on building the plate amps with all the right stuff into it but they have to shave some corner just to make it competitive that is reasonable okay I am going to bring you closer to show you what I've done and what I have done here can be all retrofit to most if not all of the plates and out there if they have a switch switching power supply it may be more difficult but it's still doable but if a linear power supply definitely can be improved the way I did it it's basically an FCF but it has to be a suitable voltage of FCF and FCF is a capacitor pack external capacitor pack use a use a plug and play to increase the capacitance of the output stage okay so I am going to bring you closer so you can see closer and I'm going to show you the the spec on from the manual of this app spare with me let's see you can zoom in okay now it's big enough big enough you can see It's a 500 watt. Now 500 W, I'm assuming they means 500 watts. But when you look at the spec on the back, now the number has been fudging a little. Let's see. Okay, so they said 273, I'm reading backward, okay? So bear with me, 273 watts into eight ohms and 540 watts into four ohms. What's that really mean? And one third duty cycle. You know what it what it means. It's um, first of all they're not rating that five hundred watts into eight ohm. Let's let's let, let's give a take. Is the, the number the exact number is not that crucial. So let's call it five hundred watts. Five hundred watts. They they rated at five hundred watts into four ohms. Is it, it, it's typical for a professional sound reinforcement amp to rate it into four ohms. Okay, so I'm not knocking it, and um, and then they rated they, they do give you the rating of uh, into uh, eight ohms. That's two hundred seventy three watts. So two hundred seventy three watt into eight ohms, five hundred forty watt into four ohms. So they did fudge a number a little bit to make it slightly confused, but that's not really my concern. It's it's it's, it's still acceptable, and then they said. One third duty cycle. I did say based on one third uh, power, based on one third power duty cycle. In a simplified words, they are not counting on the user to count on the subwoofer constantly. It so when you watch a movie, you don't get that explosion 100% of the time. You get conversation. Conversation, there's basically no base. So they are counting on that kind of usage. So the, 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 the amps has a chance to cool off. So if you're trying to put a sine wave, if you're trying to put a 250 watt sine wave into eight on through this amp, I would not because there are other, other factors that will actually kill the amps. I don't think it's instantly. I'm not going to use my $350 to, to test it. It's, it's still, they still list it at $359 US on uh, Part Express. So I'm not going to waste my $360 just to prove the point. I don't make enough money from YouTube video to cover my expense. So 
I, I would not use this M as a 100% duty cycle, of course, and nobody nobody at home will use the 100% duty cycle on a subwoofer. In a sound and re reinforced system, that's a different story. So they are redundant built into sound reinforced system. I would not call it a pub, I would not call it a PA either. PA is different than sound, re sound reinforcement. If you get down to the details, so PA is basically mostly conversation again. Uh, sound reinforcement is different. Sound, re sound reinforcement also depends on the type of music. So in those cases, they could be. 60, 75 percent duty cycle, uh, especially the hard rock. Um, they accept amps blew up in every concert. So it's a home base, it's a home subwoofer. So you gotta use it as a home subwoofer. But for music and and movie in a, in at home, probably okay. Now I am gonna turn it around, and I also see other things that truly need improvements in order to actually. In order to actually have the best performance out of the M, the M, the M itself is not bad, not the greatest. His thing can be bigger. There can be more number of transistor output. But at, at the same time, three hundred and sixty dollars. That's retail. If you if you keep looking back, how much money they are allowed to put into the parts, then their marketing, their all kind of stuff, their part express have to make some money. So. I am not complaining about what they put into as a part. The design, the design process too. I I know they have been selling this M for a long time, so the design is basically um, amortized into big, really small piece. But they still have to pay people. So I am not I'm not complaining about the features, especially all these features. Even the, even the mechanical knobs cost money. So but they 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 are all, they have to they have to shave some corner, round the com some corner, to. Keep the price competitive. One of the main, one of the usual, usual things on any or any audio manufacturer. Should I say usual or is it typical? Typical things. It's power supply, and for a let, let's say five hundred watts. Okay, I'm just I don't want to change my number. Let's say five hundred watts. Five hundred watts plate amp have two little cap like this. Now physically this is not little. This is a 35 millimeter by 50 millimeter cap. It's not small. But the they are 200 volt 200 volt rating at 2200 microfarad each. Before I zoom in you probably see a white spot on the on the other side. I am going to do another video to explain those cap rating and ripple currents related to amp design. But this one, I'm going to concentrate on this. This amp. This is a two pieces of 2200 microfarad, 200 volt capacitor. First of all, the rail voltage is plus and minus 135. I don't quite get it why they put a 200 volts in there, unless they get them. They, they got the 200 volt version and discount because you can put 160 volt on a 135 volt rail is plenty of safety, which is what I have done. These are the two original cap and 2200 microfarad each and capacitor at 2200 microfarads are usually have around 3 amps ripple current. With 3 amps maximum ripple current, I don't think is quite enough to have 270, 250 watts into 8 ohms, not to mention 540 watts into 4 ohms. So don't expect you get nearly as much power from this amp as they claim and if you do you basically kill the caps within a week that's how bad how bad it is but they are not counting on people using that much and that's why i have talked to a few technicians and they say plate amps are almost like disposable and the main failure is always the main capacitor cap and so is all those vintage stuff the vintage receiver, they always have just two caps, two main caps. Some of the newer M designs always still have only two main caps. The two main caps are usually the one to fail, and vintage equipment need to recap, and because of that two main cap. Using a single cap, it always have a lower ripple current than using two or three caps combined, even the capacitor is the same. 
you will still have a higher ripple current by using multiple caps. But why aren't manufacturers using more numbers of cap? Let's not even by talking about increased capacity yet. Let's say the 220 microfarad, you can actually use two 1,000 microfarad and add up to it, but add up to 2,000 microfarad and have a higher ripple current than one 2,200 microfarad. And it will actually be better than using one cap. But why are they not doing that? Because money. Every single can, this is aluminum can, every single can costs money. So the more number of cans always cost more, no matter the regardless of the capacitance. If you see more number of this, it costs more money. That's how simple it is. So I have increased the capacitance of the power supplies from a total of 40, 4,400 microfarad, and I added another 33,000 microfarad, which is seven and a half times of the original and automatic circuit, so it will have soft start. It does, that's one thing. That I have been doing this for so many years, probably for more than 30 years, and only on YouTube and social media that's just saying that I'm doing it for five, six years, five years, since 2020. And there are still many people out there saying like, if you put a big cap in it, it will blow your rectifier. Yes, it will. But they don't understand you can do soft start to avoid that mistake. And I have done power supply up to 2,000 farad at plus and minus 12 volt, uh, 40 farad at plus and minus 35 volt. That, it, it, the bigger the capacitance the or and or higher the voltage, you just have to have multiple soft start circuits. You cannot have one. That, that's also the soft start has to be related to the rail voltage supply. Sometimes, sometimes it can be can be DC soft start and AC soft start depends on the design. But when I design amps for my brands, my models, I would prefer to have AC soft start. And for retrofit like this. Which is FCF retrofit like this is a DC soft start because it, if I do a DC soft, DC soft start that will means less surgery inside the original capacity original amps. Less surgery meaning like we don't need to touch any of the inside of the amp. We just have to put a jack in, hook it up to a rail, and then we can just plug in the FCF unit that I've designed. That um, you can look it up the FCF unit on my website. They are external capacitor pack available in different voltage, so, it, so you can just plug and play anytime. And it has built-in soft start. So that's what I've done here. The built-in soft start for plus and minus 135 volts. So I use 160 volt cap instead of 200 volt cap because it just costs more money. Yeah. The, again, the, the, on the white spot, I will explain how to figure the cost of the capacitor. So basically, I did the. FCF retrofit, but not within the metal chassis because this is a prototype. I did the whole things in three days along with my regular production, so I didn't spend a whole lot of time to actually measure things. So I did the power supply, I did the timing circuit to prevent the DC offset, and I also did this one. This is a XLR jack for the input, and it's not a balance input. It's a two single ended with one ground connections. The reason I do this is because this only have two single ended inputs and if I want to put a subwoofer in a long distance, long distance can be any 10 feet or 15 feet away. It also depends on how your house wiring wire. Now bear with me on that. It's, they said, they did say that uh, the circuit design has, have done All the effort they can do to prevent ground loop, but that still has a minor chance that the ground loop can occur. I agree. Even though they have a ground ground pin here, they grounded the plate. I don't believe they have grounded the plate, connected the plate between the earth ground, which is the plate, and the signal ground, which is outside shell of the LCA jet. At least I cannot find any. Um, I do not find any switches and connect to that either. So assuming they're not. 
and the jets are not touching the metal plate so the earth ground is not connected to signal ground that's one thing to avoid ground loop but it's not guaranteed and and the there are occasion I can understand why they say that they need to cover the rear because they are they are set up well, we also deal with a lot of people that doesn't have a lot of experience. When they hear hum and buzz, they get panic. I have dealt with those people before, and all you need to do, all you need to do, is easy to say than done. But what you, my advice to people that have to have to deal with that is: first of all, calm them down. Buzz and hum doesn't hurt anything. Just calm down, calm down, take a deep breath, and then deal with it. So buzz and hum can still happen because of you running a long, 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 long LCA weight cable. When you're running an LCA cable, you get two separate ground, one ground per channel. So that's why you get a ground loop. That's the ground loop. If your, if your cable is too long, then your ground loop is longer. The ground loop noise are basically a residual noise, residual voltage between two grounds the res if the resistance of two grounds are high enough, then you will get hum or buzz. That's how. That's basically how the ground loop noise are generated. So by using single ground, so I will have assuming this is coming from a processor or preamp, the signal coming from processor to preamp to here. By using single ground, I will not have a ground loop. So I can, in theory, I can run a thousand feet far away from the preamp, I will not have a ground loop because I will have a single one ground for both channels. So that's why I do that. If you don't have a ground loop, don't touch it. It's like, if not bro if not broken, do not fix it. But my application, I have, I'm going to put it in several different systems. I would have to do as much pre preventive measure as possible to prevent any kind of possible noise at home. So this is all I have done to this plate amp and it is ready to go to hook up to um, other system but this capacitor the, the way they use it now again I'm not gonna bring them because they need to they need to find corner to cut in order to make the price competitive for normal people this two cap is gonna blow up the, the first first thing they're gonna blow up but it's replaceable. It should be worth replacing because all these things worth saving. And the design is basically well designed. Our part use is reasonably well. I do. I don't think it will fail. If I kind of use it as treat it as one hundred fifty watt amps, not a five hundred watt amp. So that means I don't pound on it really hard. But these two caps will fail. No matter what, you, what you're going to do, this two cap will fail if you watch enough movie, if not enough explosion, because every time the explosion hits, you might draw enough peak current to pass the ripple current rating for the cap. And every time you do that, you heat up the cap, the, when you heat up the cap enough, it will just fail. It will, it will fail. In a, in a nice way, it will just get weaker and weaker and weaker, so your amp has less and less and less power. You might or may not hear it, but it will just sound weak. But in a, in a bad way, it will just blow up, and then your amp will just like, mm, hum. Just shut it off. Give it to the technician. They can fix it. That's all. So, that's the end of this video. I'm going to go to the white spot and explain why manufacturer a cutting corner on a power supply. Until next time.